$1,000. So two transactions of $1,000 each. Yeah, my mother actually lost $4,806. What about you, Paul? $5,998. Man, fighting to even get unemployment has been hard enough for so many people. So imagine how it feels once you finally have money coming in to see it all stolen out of your account. KPI X5's Kenny Choi was the first to expose what appears to be a massive fraud problem involving the use of unemployment debit cards issued by Bank of America. Kenny, what's the very latest? As of tonight, KPIX 5 has received calls and emails from more than 60 people who say that their EDD debit cards were hacked and lost thousands of dollars. And tonight, we're learning the state may be doing a runaround federal law by pushing people into using the cards in the first place. You know, I sort of shouted out, <laughs> oh my God, almost all of my unemployment has been basically hacked. That was Brooke Sukumel's reaction a few weeks ago when she went to check her Bank of America EDD card balance. Two charges, one for $1,500 at Neiman Marcus and another for $1,200 at the online luxury vendor Intermix had wiped out her account. She says she was on hold for hours, two days straight before she was finally able to file a claim. And she's still fighting to get all her money back. It feels like Bank of America isn't taking this seriously. It absolutely feels like we're being treated like second-class citizens. Brooke reached out to us after seeing our previous reports about others caught in the very same predicament. And since then, we've received even more emails, everyone desperately crying out for help. How many of you have lost money to fraudsters in your accounts? $1,000. So two transactions of $1,000 each. Yeah, my mother actually lost $4,806. Wow. What about you, Paul? $5,998. Everyone in this group lost their jobs because of the pandemic and depends on their unemployment benefits to survive. Because I'm a single mother, I have a son. I'm a widow, I have three kids. But they say trying to get Bank of America to help is almost impossible. Just like everybody else was on hold two, three hours, click, hang up, called again. Can I put you on hold? Click. I actually went into the bank myself twice to try to get help in person. And um, they were, oh, they didn't want to touch it. They were like, oh, oh, don't don't talk to us. Call the number on the wall. And they say once you do get through. Basically, what they do is try to make you feel guilty, saying, no, no, it's, this is a valid uh, withdrawal. Even though they believe all of the transactions had obvious red flags. It happened at two ATMs you know, miles away from me in the middle of the night. So I said, how did I make two transactions in San Diego and Arizona at the within minutes of each other? Despite providing evidence, victims say the bank did nothing for them. And I sent them my police report and FTC report, receipts I used that same day that they were withdrawing in a different city. Money were taken out of ATM machines and they have cameras on those ATM machines, right? Instead, days after filing claims, they say they got letters like this one that says the above listed claim has been closed. That letter was dated the 20th. I didn't make the initial claim to the 19th, so nothing was investigated. Just the letter was generated as soon as I hung up the phone. The letter goes on to say you may request that we reopen your claim, but victims say that too seems to go nowhere. Um, I actually called this morning at 7 a.m. She gave me a new claim number. Um, but what use is that if we can't even check the status of that claim? I know I'm not exempt from fraud. I know that that's just the time we're living in and people are going to get more desperate. But when you have an institution as large as Bank of America and they're refusing to do anything about it and the state is aware of it too. I just don't think that's fair. Bank of America once again turned down our request for an interview. It won't tell us how many customers are affected, how much has been stolen or when, if ever, victims will get their money back. The bank has to do a real investigation and they can't just deny claims that they know are probably fraudulent. Lauren Saunders with the National Consumer Law Center says the real problem is forcing people to use the debit card that, as we have reported, does not have a security chip. She says the California Employment Development Department may be doing a runaround federal law by offering only paper checks as an alternative option, but not allowing direct deposit. What California does is really force people into these cards 
where under the law, you have the right to choose how you receive your unemployment benefits. The Employment Development Department's exclusive contract with Bank of America may have something to do with it. It's a revenue sharing agreement in which EDD gives the bank the taxpayer funds to distribute and the bank in return pays EDD for the privilege of handling the money. So it's profitable for both Bank of America and EDD. And I think that's part of the reason California is pushing people into use, using the cards rather than using direct deposit. I don't even, even understand why B of A has this longstanding contract with EDD. Don't give up. There is protection under that Visa logo that Bank of America puts on that prepaid card. So it is prepaid, but I will get my money back. I'm not going to stop. ADD told us that if the fraud is happening on the card, then it's up to Bank of America to resolve it and to pay the victims back. When we asked B of A about that, the answer came back, no comment. In Milpitas, Kenny Choi, KPIX 5. Now, KPIX 5 has been submitting names of victims that contact us to Bank of America. So far, 13 got their money back. If your EDD debit card has been hacked, send us an email and we will submit your name as well.